Hello, uh, this is going to be just kind of a rant again, but uh, I was talking to someone who said some things that bothered me the other day. Um, he goes to a building called a church, or a business called a church, that's what they really are as businesses, and um, he repeated some things I've heard parroted by people who go to these buildings all the time, and one of the things that he said was, who are you accountable to, because I don't go to a building called a church. So who am I accountable to? Well, I just like every Christian needs to be, I'm accountable to God. Because that's what matters first and foremost. See, if if you're not accountable to God, then it doesn't matter, you know, if, if you're accountable to a person or whatever, because we can all wear a mask. We can, if you're not accountable to God, then you can lie. So you can just lie to people. Um, I mean, are you telling me that every time that you sin, that you're going to confess your sins to a different, to, to a person? I mean, I don't believe that. What we need to do is we need to be accountable to God first and foremost. And the people who go to these buildings called churches, they are not accountable to God. Um, what? Um, how is a person who goes to one of these buildings going to hold you accountable? Um, uh, you weren't at you weren't at church last Sunday, Bob, or whatever. You know that's the only kind of accountability that they're going to hold you to is you not coming, is you missing. You know a day or whatever because it's a cult and they they're all brainwashed and it's all deception and they just want to keep you to coming to this cult okay um god didn't say anything about having to come to a building on sunday okay um but yet they would like to make you believe that he did so um you know what if you're caught fornicating it's, it's heard that you've been fornicating or that you've been going out and getting drunk on the weekends or whatever, something like that, you know, some sin. Are they going to hold you accountable for that? Well, they might say, you know, uh, well, that is sin and you really need to stop. But are they going to put that wicked person away from among them like the Bible says to? No. Why not? Because they're not accountable to God. Because they don't do things the way that God says to do them in the Bible. Okay. What about offering and tithes and all this stuff that's unbiblical? If they were accountable to God, they wouldn't be doing this stuff. And if you're accountable to God and you're going to one of these places, then I believe that you should be convicted about this stuff. You should know that this is unbiblical, this is wrong. For them to do something that's unbiblical and say it's biblical, then that's deception, that's lying, that's satanic, that's evil. So, I'm accountable to God, and we all need to be accountable to God. You know, I live with my mom, I am accountable to my mom, I'm accountable to other people. You don't have to go to a building to be accountable to someone. This is just part of the brainwashing, part of the manipulation that goes on there, that people to believe this stuff. You know, and some other things that he said was like, well, no church is perfect, or, you know, a lot of churches are bad, but mine's okay. No, you said yourself that yours does tithing and all that stuff that's unbiblical, you see, God never meant for one person to be a leader over people. Okay, you're not supposed to lord over the flock. Okay, one person standing on a stage every week, entertaining people for like an hour while everyone else is a spectator. That's not that's not biblical. Okay, um, it's just bad. These places are cults. They're satanic, and you know all of them. You know if they adhere to the system. Um, Man, I wanted to have a verse ready for this, but I forgot about it. You know, and something else that he said was, uh, well, they have to have power and they have to have electricity and everything, so it's it's okay to, you know, have people give money or whatever. And I don't have this verse ready for it, but uh, basically... If I wanted to have a building to have the brethren meet in, and that was my idea or whatever, then I would be the one responsible for paying for it, okay? I would, you know, pay for the electricity and everything. And if people wanted to offer help for it, then that's fine. But to pass around, to have a special moment during the service, to pass around a plate for tithes and offerings, that's, that's different. That's, uh, that's manipulation. That's saying, okay, this is the time to give money. You know, um, it's not biblical at all, okay? people If people want to give offerings or whatever, then they can do it any time. But to make a designated time for it, then that's something completely different.
Okay, that's really insinuating, okay, you need to give money. You know, if you're not giving money, then you're not right, or whatever, you know, make you feel guilty for not putting money in the plate. That's a bunch of garbage, because people could give money at any other time. Before the service, after it, any time during the week, people could give money. But to make a designated time for it, that completely changes everything. That makes it more of like a necessity. Okay? It's mind wa it's brainwashing, it's mind control, it's manipulation, it's deception. A hundred percent. That's all it is. Um, like I said, if these people were accountable to God, they wouldn't be doing this stuff. If these people were accountable to God, they would be putting people who are called brethren that are in sin out of the, out of the fellowship. They don't do that. They don't, and they won't. Because they're not accountable to God. And that's what matters. Uh, I don't know if I think of anything else that I was going to say. I guess I'll just end that for now. So, <laughs> be accountable to God. God bless. Alright, so this is going to be more on this accountability thing. And uh, I started to mention an idea in the other video about being accountable. And uh, I, don't, I didn't really get through that, I don't think. But, let's see. I got the verse now. I was talking about how people will say that offerings and everything are and tithing is good because somehow the building the the bills need to be paid and whatnot, but second Corinthians twelve fourteen says, Behold, the third time I am ready to come to you, and I will not be burdensome to you, for I seek not yours but you, for the children ought not lay up for the parents, but the parents for the children. So you know the parents ought to lay up for the children. So if uh you know, for an example, like, if I lead somebody to the Lord or something, then I want to give them a Bible and everything, and I'm not trying to brag on myself or anything, but, you know, I want to take care of their needs, and it's the same thing if, if there's a bunch of people that start getting saved around me or whatever, and we want to have fellowship, and for some reason the house is, is not enough or whatever, and I wanted to get a separate place, then I would use my funds to fund for that. If it's an idea that I wanted to do, then I wouldn't be making other people pay for it, okay? And if I couldn't afford to do it myself, then it wouldn't happen, okay? And there's no reason why people can't meet outside or meet in a garage or meet in their homes or whatever, you know? If, this, if they need more space, then, then, then whoever's idea it is, or if it's a group effort or whatever, then they should put the money into it. But there doesn't need to be some designated time to where people are, you know, co coerced into being, you know, it's extortion and, and it's just manipulation to get money from people. So, anyways, I'll read this article that this woman wrote. It says, who are you accountable to? One of the questions that people ask me is, who are you accountable to? Oftentimes the subtle implication behind this question is that I'm not accountable to anyone because I'm not a member of a religious institution. Many people seem to believe that you have to be a member of a religious institution in order to be accountable to someone. I believe that accountability is important and necessary in our spiritual growth, but I think we need to understand that being a member of a religious institution does not and will not make us magically accountable to anyone, not even if we are active in ministry and heavily involved. How so? Number one, a person can be active, involved member of a local religious institution and wear a spiritual mask a form of godliness, which is hypocrisy, around their religious circle and be a different person in their private life. Many professing Christians evade accountability in exactly this manner by hiding who they really are and putting on a false pretense of righteousness around their religious circle. If we are not authentic around the brethren, then they do not know who we really are and they cannot hold us accountable. In order to be accountable to others, we have to be consistently authentic, genuine, and real around the brethren. Number two, a person can be active, involved member of a, of a local religious institution, but if that religious institution is not accountable to God and the Holy Scriptures, then the members are not truly accountable to God. They merely have a superficial appearance of accountability to man-made rules, regulations, teachings, and hierarchies, but not to the Lord and His Word. They can hide, their, they can hide behind their man-made rules and regulations as loopholes to evade accountability to God and render His Word of none effect. Many professing Christians evade accountability to Christians outside their institution by hiding behind the structures, policies, bylaws, and man-made protocols of their institution. In this manner, they feign accountability while blocking out the voice of God, sidestepping Scripture, and ignoring the saints. 
Number three, a person can be an active involved member of a local religious institution and pretend to be accountable to spiritual coverings, spiritual fathers, spiritual mothers, mentors, accountability partners, and leaders who cover up for them, enable them, run interference, act as co-conspirators and accomplices, and do damage control for them when others try to hold them accountable. If a person is insulated himself, has insulated himself behind a wall of false accountability partners for the express purpose of doing whatever they want and evading accountability to anyone, you cannot hold them accountable. Number four, a person can be an active involved member of a local religious institution and be authentic, but if no one around them truly cares for them, or if the people around them show partiality, respecter of persons, no one will care to hold them accountable. They're just another face in the pew or the pulpit. True accountability requires that a person first is first accountable to God. If someone does not listen to the Holy Spirit and the scriptures he inspired, they will not listen to you. If someone is trying to hide from God and cover their sin with a fig leaf instead of being open and honest with the Lord, they will not be transparent and authentic with you. True accountability in the body of Christ flows from accountability to God. We have to get this. True accountability begins with God. Some of us have it the other way around. We think if we persuade people to be accountable to us, then that will, that will automatically make them accountable to God. Accountability doesn't work like that. It begins with a heart that is humbled before God, not a heart that is coerced into false submission to man. If you feel the need to coerce people to be accountable through false doctrines and false practices, then what you actually have is domination, fear, man-pleasers, and eye-pleasers, not true accountability which produces spiritual growth. Many of our religious efforts to make people accountable to us have resulted in spiritual abuse, idolatry, hyper-authoritarianism, tyranny, unchecked power, rebellion, religious anarchy, and boatloads of professing Christians who are accountable to man, but are not accountable to God and His Holy Word. As I have stated above, true accountability first begins with accountability to God. When a person is open, honest, humble, and authentic before the Lord, they will be open, honest, humble, and authentic before God's people. If they listen to the Holy Spirit, then they will also listen to Scripture and those through whom the Holy Spirit speaks. I definitely think there is a huge lack of true accountability in the church today, but we need to realize that the main reason why is because people are not accountable to God. Hence the popular mantra of this generation is, who are you to judge? Most of the people who parrot this mantra claim to be Christians, and it seems that they don't want to be accountable to God and His Holy Word. Many leaders don't want to be accountable to God and scriptures, Holy Scriptures either, yet they pontificate about the need for others to be accountable while they pull every possible stunt to evade true accountability and avoid answering to anyone. Some of us have even cherry-plucked a scripture from the Old Testament to shield religious leaders from accountability. Touch not God's anointed, and do my prophets no harm. Who are we fooling when we ask people, who are you accountable to? What authority do we have to ask people this when we do not want to hold leaders accountable and be accountable to anyone ourselves? Personally, I do not go around asking people who they are accountable to. The question each of us needs to ask ourselves is, am I truly accountable to God? If we aren't living a life of accountability to God, then it doesn't. Then does it really matter who we claim our covering is, who our pastor is, and what institution we attend? Anyone can say, so-and-so is my covering, my pastor is so-and-so, or I'm a member of such-and-such -such church, but if we're, we aren't accountable to God and His Word, then we aren't truly accountable. We're just loose cannons, posturing and pretending to be accountable while ignoring the Creator. Okay. So, there's that. Thanks for watching. God bless. Except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven.